Welcome back to Motoblade, everyone. Today I'm gonna go over six defensive riding strategies that you guys should use. This is for new riders and advanced riders alike. You may know some of these, you might not know any of them. But we're gonna go over my top six defensive riding strategies right after this. So these tips that I'm going to give you have come from multiple sources. Other people on YouTube, MSF Safety Course Book, and my MSF instructors and other riders I've talked to. So I've compiled this list based on those people plus what I deem to be the most valuable out of all the things I've read and learned in my two years of riding experience so far. Number one, everyone, no exceptions to that, everyone is a dumbass. Everyone is out to hit you, and you have to be vigilant because everyone and anyone can hit you at any time. You are on a motorcycle. You have nothing around you. You're done. You get hit, you go down, you're done. You better have good protective gear because it's going to hurt. Even a piece of crap jalopy car is safer than a motorcycle. So everyone and anyone is out to hit you at any time. Everyone's a dumbass. Be vigilant and be on the lookout for every single car and motorcycle, other motorcyclists. But usually, usually motorcyclists are a lot more vigilant because we have to be because everyone's a dumbass. Number two, ride on the left edge of the lane. Now, in the MSF course, they talk about three parts of the lane for a motorcyclist. There's left, there's middle, and then there's over here on the right edge. Why do you want to be on the left? Well, there are reasons to use every lane, but the left is generally the safest for two reasons. Number one, lights. Your lights are gonna go out and they're more likely to catch the attention of oncoming traffic. Now it might seem also a little bit counterintuitive because you're putting yourself closer to the oncoming traffic, but a car's left tire is going to be over here on the left edge anyway, so you're not putting yourself any closer to them than you would be in a normal car. Second of all, and the reason they told us to do this in the MSF course, is because the oncoming traffic is generally not going to have an issue seeing you or wanting to drift over into your lane, usually. And again, be vigilant and be careful about that. But there is a big problem with idiots who are behind you, who are tired of riding behind you, and they want to pass. And when those dumbasses go to pass you, if you're over here in the middle or on the right edge like this, they come up behind you and they see an opportunity where, you know, normally in a car they wouldn't necessarily attempt the pass because you have to get by the car and have enough time to get back over. But with you on the right edge, it makes them think that they have more room to squeeze in and try to pass you. And if it doesn't go well, they run you off the road. So by putting yourself on the left edge, you are claiming your entire lane. This is mine, do not try to pass me just because I'm a motorcycle and you might be able to squeeze by and you think you have room. This is my lane, you have to wait for an appropriate time to pass. So that's what they told us in the MSF course. There are times you might wanna ride in the middle. Uh, perhaps there's a large truck coming in the left lane and they can push a lot of air in front of them, those semi-trucks and you might want to get over to the middle. You might want to get to the right if you see someone pulling a stupid move in the left lane up ahead. You know, there are times when you can use other sections of the lane. But for the most part, the majority of the people I've talked to who are instructors and who I've consulted on this, ride as close to the left edge, use the left edge of your lane as much as possible. Especially when there's traffic behind you. There's no one out here right now, it wouldn't necessarily be that big of a deal, but Still, left edge is where it's at. Number three, visibility. Some people talk about wearing high-vis gear. Other people talk about making sure the bike is visible. I'm gonna take it a little bit further than that. Yes, you should be wearing visible gear if you're riding at night, especially. Today, I'm, I'm a white boy, I reflect all the light. So, I, <laughs> most people are gonna see me or my bright blue shirt I've got on. And I have extra lights on my bike, which is something I love about the Chieftain. So instead of just having my single motorcycle headlamp on up front, I have running lights that I always have on, day or night, just for extra visibility. 
So you have the gear and you have yourself. Make yourself visible. My helmet has high-vis reflective uh, paint on it. My HJC FG17 helmet. So that's reflective and that's beneficial. Let's talk about your own visibility. And I mean that by vision. Get yourself a insert for your visor if you're wearing a full face helmet. Get yourself one of those pin lock visor inserts so you don't fog. Lots of guys I've gone out with riding in the morning, their visors fog up and they've got it cracked or they're just trying to view the entire road through this little spot in their visor that hasn't fogged over yet. And that's moronic, okay? You need to be seeing everything. You need to be looking out for every dumbass on the road who is out to hit you. You want to make sure you have good visibility. So make sure you get a pin lock visor or put some really good anti-fog crap on the inside of your visor so you can see. Don't risk it, don't try driving. You know, some of us do it in the car. We clear off one side of the windshield. You know, we don't necessarily clear the whole thing when it's iced over. But if your visor fogs on a motorcycle helmet, the consequences can be way more severe. Don't do it. So good visibility for yourself and good visibility on yourself for others to see. Number four, four, can't count today. Number four, get away from road rage and angry drivers. I drive the speed limit, sometimes a little bit faster. Sometimes, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, what's that? I never speed. I would never, ever speed. That That's, yeah, okay, I can't BS that. But my point is, <laughs> There are people who are going to be behind you who want to go faster than you because you're on a motorcycle and you might be out for a nice leisurely cruise in the afternoon or the evening and they want to go around you because, again, they're dumbasses and they want to get home and dinner's ready. So, you know, let them go by. Don't try to sit there and piss them off. Find a place to pull over. Should you have to do that? Should they back off your tail? Yes, they should. Do they? No. They're going to ride your ass, and it's not safe for them to be right behind you. If you had to brake in a hurry, they have a lot more mass with that car coming up behind you. Their braking distance is going to be longer than yours. So if they want to go by you, if they're that desperate and that much of a pain in the butt, find somewhere to pull over and just let them go by. It's not worth your life. It's not worth putting yourself in danger. Let the morons go. Number five ties in really closely with number four. Letting those people go by you in number four, you're distancing yourself from the danger. In number five, you are the one doing the distancing. And it might not just be a moron or a dumbass on the road. It could be a deer. It could be something falls off of a truck in front of you, you know, guys hauling wood or furniture or something in the back of their truck, something falls off. You are very fast and you are very maneuverable on a motorcycle. Use that to your advantage. You can swerve out of the way. You can duck, you can dip, you can turn yourself a lot faster than a regular car. So always be prepared and practice those maneuvers. Practice your counter steering. Practice these tight little leans. I like to do these as I'm going down the road on nice stretches like this. Practice these little flicks from side to side, dipping the motorcycle over to change from one part, one third of your lane to another third. Practice those maneuvers. Speed. You can get down in the gears and take off like a rocket on a motorcycle. In fact, bigger motorcycles like big cruisers like my Chieftain have a lot of lower end acceleration, more so than a sport bike usually. There are some high-end sport bikes like those Kawasaki Ninja H2s or whatever. They have insane torque. Forget them, but you can have all kinds of speed on a motorcycle. Even if you think your motorcycle is slow, just drop it down a gear. That's where the old saying comes from. Drop a gear, disappear. Get yourself away from the danger if you need to. I will not ride behind guys who have stuff in the back of their truck. Even if it's strapped down, you don't know if those straps are good, if they're worn or frayed. Uh, you don't know how well they tied their shit down. Just get out. Get out and away from that kind of danger. Up here in Vermont where I am, we have a lot of logging trucks. And a lot of guys hauling firewood all over the place. I am not going to sit behind anyone hauling firewood. If I know the road and I know there's not a good place for me to pass them safely, you know, like a half-dash line here, 
if I don't have that available to me, I'm gonna pull over and just chill for a minute. Maybe change out the music on my phone, whatever, while I'm sitting off on the side of the road somewhere. But I'm not gonna ride behind them. Because if one log, one piece of wood comes off the back of that truck and hits me or hits the bike, that is what we call in the business an ungood day. Okay, my friend, you are in for a very ungood day when something comes off the back of the truck because they didn't tie their shit down. So get away from the danger. Use your maneuverability, use your speed, pass them, get away, whatever you need to do, but just get away from any situation where you think it is not completely safe. As safe as it can be on a motorcycle. Number six, I, I can't do that with both hands. Wait, can I? Let's see, I've got cruise control. Hey, there we go, number six. They talked to us in our MSF course about squishables and non-squishables. It sounds twisted and kind of is in a way, especially if you use the puppy analogy, but you'll get my point. Big dog, big dog, German Shepherd, Husky, something like that. Um, that's not a squishable. You hit that on your bike or hit a deer or something, you, you're probably going to go down or it's going to do some damage or hurt you. Yeah, it's, it's just not good. Small cat. I don't like cats, so, you know, run them over. Cat, chipmunk, squirrel, those are squishables. Okay? Not big cats, not lions and tigers if you're riding your Carly through the freaking Sahara. I don't know. But squirrels, chipmunks, that kind of stuff, small animals, those are squishables. You can hit them. You'll be fine. In fact, it's better to hit them square on than from an angle. Depending on the size, it's better to just do that. And in our MSF course, they taught us, they, they would throw a log on the ground in front of us, or uh, a two by four. And we would have to ride over top of it. And they told us, brake, slow down. So let's say someone threw a two by four or fell off the truck about 150 feet in front of me and I see it coming up. I would start braking right here and slowing down. But right before I go over it, let off the brake. So that way the nose of the bike is not aimed down. You want the front suspension to come back up a little bit by letting off the brake, and that will help you go over the obstacle a little bit better than braking hard and going nose first into it with the suspension compressed down in the front because you're gripping that front brake. 70% or more of your braking power comes from your front brake. So right before you hit whatever object might be unavoidable, release that front brake, let the front come up, and go over top of it. That only works for certain objects, certain small objects. You know, if you got something big coming towards you, well, you're you're kind of screwed. I mean, if you're headed for that wall down in Mexico and you hit the wall, uh, you're not getting over that just by releasing the brake when you get to it, no. So brake as hard as you can in that situation. But you get my point. Going along with that whole making yourself visible, I'm pulling off on the side of the road here, which isn't always the safest thing because my shoulder isn't very big here but I've got my flashers on trying to be visible as best I can but I need my notes because my mind is blanking on what the last thing was I want to talk to you guys about I know I already uh, I know I already did six. Oh, yep okay I got it how could I forget this one? This one's my mantra. Number seven, little bonus that I'm throwing in here for you guys. Loud pipes save lives. If you don't think that loud pipes save lives, start an argument down in the comments. Let's get this war going. Loud pipes save lives. If I'm on a quiet ass motorcycle, People aren't going to hear me. You're already smaller. You're less visible. What can you do to enhance that? Well, you could drive around with fiber optic lights going all over the bike and try to make yourself more visible. Put a police, you know, light bar on the front, if that's legal where you live. So you can take that to an extreme. Or how about you just get yourself a decent pair of pipes and you can rev that engine and people will hear you. People don't want to hit you. People hit you because they don't see you. What's up, dude? People hit you because they don't see you. The majority of motorcycle accidents when a car is involved 
and the car is at fault. In the majority of the reports, you will hear the driver of the car say, I never saw them. Well, there's not a whole lot about that that you can do on a motorcycle that we haven't already discussed. But you can make your bike louder. Loud pipes save lives. Now, there's another option if you don't want to ruin the aesthetic of your bike. Maybe you're not going for that look with big pipes or short shots on it. Maybe you just want to make the bike louder, but you don't want to do the pipes because you don't want to have to hear that all the time. Get yourself a loud horn. There's a company called Denali. They make one called the Denali Sound Bomb. And it really is. It's a sound bomb. It's loud. I think it's the one of the loudest legal horns you can put on your motorcycle. And it's awesome. I will throw a picture of it on the screen for you guys. And I'll put a link of it down in the description. I don't have one on my motorcycle yet. But I'm going to be getting one. It is so cool. And it is so loud. And it is something that you definitely want to have. If you don't have a loud horn, get yourself loud pipes. If you don't have pipes, get yourself a loud horn. Make yourself more visible by making yourself more audible on the road. One other quick thing before I sign off, guys. I've been getting a lot of requests for merchandise, so I finally have it ready. I will throw the link in the description. I'll put a picture up on the screen right here so you can see a few of the things I'm offering. But I've got t-shirts and stickers and leggings for the ladies if you all want to walk around showing off your Motoblade merchandise and how much you love my channel. So I'll have that down in the description for you guys. It's on Teespring. 100% of the profits go straight back into the channel to help making more videos and doing more cool stuff for you guys to watch and learn from. So if you guys want to pick up some Motoblade merch, head on over to my store on Teespring. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll have some more designs coming out uh, fairly soon. I'm working on a few ideas. For right now, I just have some t-shirts and stuff with my logo on it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy all that. So that's it guys, that's my top six plus bonus, so top seven defensive riding strategies. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and comment down below, did I miss something? Do you agree with me? Maybe you don't agree with me. Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe you guys wanna have an argument over whether loud pipes save lives or not. Get it going down below, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It's a big red button down there somewhere on the screen. It says subscribe, it's really hard to miss. Click the bell icon next to it. That'll give you guys notifications when there's new videos to watch right here on Motoblade. Until next time, y'all, you know what to do. Be careful out there. Everyone's a dumbass, they're all out to kill you. Be careful on your bike. Ride safe, ride on, I'll catch y'all later. Deuces.